Hello, this month we'll be showing what are the most used tools from Matrix Go. Today, we will start with the different Dream Rail options we have within Matrix Go. So, we will be talking about the Dream Rail and the Outside Dream Rail, also the Bypass Dream Rail and the Bypass Outside Dream Rail, and we will finish with the Cathedral Ring. So, these are three options that can be used on many, many different situations when designing in matrix call. I will go to the perspective view mode and I will start probably the most popular one that is the ring rail. So anytime that we want to start any ring, this will be the tool that we will use. All right, so this is the ring rail. Here we have different regions that we can choose from and then we will have for each reg uh, region a different sizes. So I will stay with the one from US and now I will go just say to a number seven. All right. Once I have the ring rail in my viewport, what happens if I click on the outside ring rail? It automatically detects that there is a inside ring rail. And then from this one, we can start to make any modification. So we can play with the side thickness, with the bottom thickness, and with the top thickness. Also, you can go to the quick comments and you have this pop-up window that is telling you that if you click on the left button from your mouse, you will get the ring rail. And if you click on the uh, right button of your mouse, you will get the outside ring rail. So let me click on the right button so I get again the outside ring rail. It's worth to mention that this is parametric, meaning that if I go to edit the ring rail and now I just change, I can go from this slider and I just start to change the size, the outside ring rail will always follow the inside ring rail. One tool that we use very often once we have the ring rail and the outside ring rail is the profile placer. When we click on the profile placer, it's asking us the select curve. This is the internal curve, the ring rail, the size from for our ring. And in this other box, if I just select outside, you will see that the ring rail adapts to the outside curve. Now, if I go back to the outside ring rail and I edit, you will see how the profile adapts to the height or, or the thickness. All right, so this will be the first scenario. Also, it will work with a gem. So if I use the gem and I go to the gem on ring rail, because I'm talking to the ring rail, the gem will, will follow the ring rail. So again, if I go to the slider and I change the size again, as you can see, the stone always adapts to the ring rail. All right, so this is the, the ring rail and outside ring rail. Now let's go for the bypass ring rail. So we will go back to the tools tab and now I will select the bypass ring. What options do we have with the bypass ring? All right, so we can play a bit with the band for this end, how close we want the band to be, and also the overlap. So as you can see, this one is going farther on this direction and this one on the opposite, depending on what setup we use in the overlap. Now that we have been talking about the ring rail, the same will happen if we use the bypass outside ring rail. So from the moment that I click on the bypass outside ring rail, it's detecting that there is an inside ring rail. Again, as I was doing with the outside ring rail, I can select what things do I want from these three different parts of my ring rail. Again, this is parametric. I can go back to the original one. And if I want to go like this, everything it's following the outside ring rail it's following all the different changes that we are doing to the bypass ring rail something that is very convenient with the bypass ring rail if i go to edit is this toggle that we have here and it's the bridge toggle many times we will add gems in this ring so if we click bridge toggle we get just this bridge in the middle of the bypass ring rail. So once I validate, in case that I want to add any gem, I will do what I was doing with the ring rail, gem on ring. Because I selected this one, the stone is detecting that we are using this one as a target. Of course, that the stone goes always to the zero location, but if we want to place it just in the middle, it's as easy as going to location and just click 0 0.5 because you know that always in matrix, we go from zero to one. So if we want it in the middle, it will be 0 0.5. So from the moment that I put it in the 0 0.5, I get the gem just in the middle. All right, so do something like this. And again, still everything, it's parametric. The gem is always following 
the ring. As I was doing with the ring rail, I can add profile. I can select the curve. I will select outside curve. That will be this one. Of course, that I need just to. All right, so now has detected. I can use a mirror. And now, again, if I go to the outside ring rail, if I just move it up, the profile is always following, right? So now in case that we would like to do just one ring to hold this stone, we could probably go to the profile placer, edit, activate auto sweep. So now I can play with it until I get something to hold this gem. All right, so as you can see, everything is parametric. Now, if I want just to split it, I need to work with overlap. So you have many, many options when playing with the bypass ring rail. So this was the second option. And then we'll go to the third option. And this will be the cathedral ring. Cathedral ring, when we are talking about bridal, is a ring that we use a lot. So with the cathedral ring, instead of having the inside and the outside, we get everything in just one go. Here, as you can see, we have the bridge that we had a toggle on the bypass ring rail. And then we can play with the top thickness, side thickness, and bottom thickness. The handles that we have here at the very top is what will help us just to make it bigger, smaller, also rotate it depending on what approach do we want to have in case we have a halo or just one stone. So this is very, very easy to use and very, very handy. So let me show you how does it looks like. Again, I will do what I did before. So I can add a gem, of course, gem on ring rail. Again, I will get it as I was telling you before in the location is zero. I will go to 0.5 just to have it in the center. And now what I will do here is just add a profile. So I will use my profile placer. I will use this one again outside to set up the height. And I will just make it smaller. I will add one here, one in the middle. But to this one, I would, I would say that I want a mirror. Because now I have, you know, more room to play. So if I want to make this part narrower, I just need to do like this. All right, now using the sweep tool that we have in Matrix Go, I could select this ones and say that I want a sweep tool between these guys. All right, and the same I can do with this bridge. So I just need to add one profile matching what I have here. I don't need an outside curve on this one because this will be flat. I will just use a mirror and I will activate auto sweep. I will make it a bit more narrower. Cool. Now that we have this, depending on what just say that here you have, let me add just a setting, something like this, just to a point. Once I have something like this, I would be able to go back to the cathedral ring rail and just edit. All right. So if I want to move it up to here, I can move it very easy. Also the rotation. All right. So, and if I want it thinner from this area, I just need to go to the cathedral ring again and I just need to make it thinner from here. All right, so it's very dynamic, and this is a tool that you will use very, very often. All right, so we have gone through the most popular ring tools that we have. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching.